Right. Um, I didn't think I'd be sharing this this morning. Um, so I may not be as well prepared as I'd like to be. Um, however, I feel I should. Um, some of, earlier this week, I made this very rash comment um, that with lots of new people being in the church recently, um, quite a few anyway, um, it would be a good idea to try and explain how early Christian fellowship works, um, to which the response was, good luck with that, um, <laughs> and that they'd be quite interested to know as well. Um, this was the eldership, by the way, so you... <laughs> um, always start with a joke. Um, and... Uh, I sort of started out on, on, on doing this, um, and, and really the reason I wanted to do this genuinely is that um, there are people with us, I think, here this morning, we've been here for a couple of years, who maybe wonder why we do things the way we do things, and you know, what are the underlying sort of principles of, of you know, what we do as a church, and I'm just looking at Dave and thinking, I have no idea whether you're going to agree with this or not, but anyway... Uh, <laughs> Um, for those who don't know, Dave, Dave and Yvonne were the founding families, or one of the couple of founding families of the church. So um, this may, this, this, I had this thought all the way through this week that I may not be so much as explaining as thing, thinking, sort of retrofitting an idea to something that happened organically. And that is, I think, partly true. Um, that, you know, we, we, we hope to be led by the Lord, and sometimes you find out why something's a good idea a bit later. Um, however, as I thought about this, there was, I suppose there's, there's for me anyway, there's, there's, there was one idea that sort of, sort of started to crystallise through the things I was thinking about and reading about. Um, and it's that idea that I want to try and speak about this morning. Um, but there's a couple of things people have said that's kind of encouraged me to share this. And, um, and it was just this phrase I kept on hearing. Um, it was, whatever the Lord tells you to do, do that. Um, and I think if there's, a, if there's a very simple principle we work as by as a church, it's listen to what the Lord is saying and do that. Um, and it keeps things very simple. Um, sometimes it's, it, it can be something you hear in a meeting. As Robin was saying, you come to a meeting, someone speaks, and it sort of gives you that boldness to go and do something or encouragement. Um, sometimes it will be something someone prays that just encourages you to, to sort of recognise the circumstances you're in and take that to the Lord. There's, there's a multitude of ways in which this works, and that really is the point of what I'm I want to say this morning, that there isn't sort of one thing, it's what we do as a body is to give every other member of the body the opportunity to hear the word of God. Um, <clears throat> and if you were to look around this morning, um, and you can do this, but if you were to look around the room this morning, you will see a group of people whose function, if you like, is to give you the word of God to enable you to act. That sounds great. So everyone else is here to help you. Except, of course, everyone else is looking around and they're seeing you. So we're all implicated in this. Our, our function, not just in our, in, our, in our gatherings and our meetings, but our function as a church, whether we're here on a Sunday morning or we come to pray together, whether it's by living in the houses and serving, whether it's by visiting someone or getting involved in something that's going on in the church, that the whole purpose of it is to build up our faith and our knowledge of God so that we live on all the fullness that God has got to give us through Christ Jesus. Um, and it, it's, in some ways, it's not complicated at all. It's just do what God gives you to do. And sometimes you're not quite sure that this is exactly what God has given you to do. Um, but you, you do what you do for someone for the second principle, which is that of love. So you don't need to have sort of flaming words appear on you on the wall or something saying, go and do such and such, because you can just consider each other in love and do the thing that love suggests. 
And so that makes it really simple. Um, and it means, and to put it in this context, if you come to a meeting and you've got something in your heart or something you've been thinking about, um, even if it's not quite fully formed, that you can share it with your brethren as an act of love, as an act of building up, of encouraging. Because you are not, you've got to bear in mind that you are, you are not sort of the, the single most important brick in the wall of this person's life. Um, you are not going to be the foundation that everything is built on. It never, not, doesn't, not everything depends on you. But your little contribution can be that, just that little kick or that little help or that little encouragement that just helps someone take another step and another step. Which is why, although I wanted to spend months preparing this and get it absolutely right, um, I feel it's actually appropriate to take a step where I'm not completely sure, <coughs> but I want to pass on something to you the kind of where I've got to so far. And for all of us, we're not passing on the finished product. We are all passing on where I've got to so far. If, like Elizabeth, you've had this, the Lord speak to you about your anchor, and that's something that's spoken to you, then we can take the risk that that might also speak to somebody else in love. And of course, the only, this only works if as a congregation of people we're willing to receive what the other has to give. If people feel that if they share something that sounds a bit silly or isn't quite theologically perfect, they're going to get jumped on, then that's going to suppress the work of the Spirit to move amongst us and just bring out those little bits. And hopefully what we have amongst us is those who are able to sort of to bring the Word of God, to have a gift in the Scriptures, and so on and so on, so that we kind of have maybe a broader foundation. But in general, if we act out of love for each other and the desire to build each other up, then we trust God to, hope, to hopefully sort out the rest. Um, but I think, I think there are some biblical principles we build on here. I think there are some things we can learn from. And I think we can apply those things to how we meet together and how we work more widely in the church. And that's what I'm going to try and do this morning. Um, we're going to start in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. But as I speak, just... Um, sorry, can I have a glass of water? I'm a bit, a bit dry. Thanks, Keith. Um, just start in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Um, and there, there are... Because there are, there are so these, these principles. Um, and we'll start... Where should we begin? Um, let's start in verse 4. Um, so we... Paul is writing about spiritual gifts. There are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. There are different ministries or services, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of activities, but it is the same God who works all in all. But the manifestation of the spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the spirit. To another, the word of knowledge through the same spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healings by the same Spirit. To another, working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits. To another, different kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. But one and the same Spirit. Thank you. But one and the same Spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually as he will. Um, Now, We'll, we'll move on in a minute, but first thing we need to notice is diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. So key to us is going to be that we are one spirit. That is, that we have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ and received his spirit, being born from above, and are baptized into Christ. <clears throat> Um, scripture tells us if we don't have the spirit of Christ, we're not his. Um, that's Romans 8, 9. So we start off maybe with a, a basic premise. That the majority of people who gather with us are Christ's, are born of him. 
That doesn't mean people who are not Christians are not welcome. Of course they are. It doesn't mean people who are sort of questioning and searching are not welcome. Of course they are. But we, we trust in God that, that there are sufficient amongst us who have his spirit, receive gifts from him to exercise those gifts, that everyone can be built up by the operation of those gifts. And those who maybe are not his will see that working amongst us in our meetings and our, our wider lives and see the goodness of God in all that we do. Um, so the same spirit, but diversities of gifts. And this is really important because it means we're not, car we're not all cardboard cutouts of each other. We're not all the same. We don't all have the same personality. We don't all have the same interests. We're not all good at the same things. We'll see more of this later in other chat passages. We're not, we don't all do the same thing. Um, I'll, 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 I'll come to that later, maybe. Um, um, differences of ministries, but the same Lord. So we're all under the same authority. So we, we make the assumption, the, we, we prefer to make the assumption, we choose to make the assumption, that it is the same Lord who is, who is motivating us to serve, motivating us to do the things we do. And if we, if we each listen to what he says, to quote, to quote Mary, whatever he says to you, do it, um, if we trust that each of us is doing that, then we will see the manifestation of the Spirit in the church because each of us will do what our Lord and Master is commanding us to do. So there's diversities of activities, the same God working. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. And so this is also is key. To receive a gift that is an ability or a, a way in which you can do something in the church is not for your benefit. It's not for our own self-aggrandizement. It's not so we look good. It's given to profit others. It is the Spirit of God working in us through love to build up each other. Um, so we have one is given the word of wisdom, knowledge, faith, gifts of healings, miracles, and so on. There's a bunch of things there that you can... But we get to verse 7. One and the same Spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually as he wills. So it's one Spirit operating in all those who are his in the church to bring about his purposes amongst us as a local congregation. And our prayer is that what God works in us will not just touch us, but the... the, the family of God worldwide. Um, we have a stone act in the wall outside that says a house of prayer for all nations. Um, one day, if you've got a moment, just think about all the different nationalities represented here, the different languages. Um, it's quite phenomenal. Um, it's just something the Lord does here. That's his choice. But then that's, that's verse 11. Of individually as he wills. It's really important in some ways, that as a church, we bring together this diversity of gift and personality and culture and background and language. And we submit that all to God and we learn from each other and we let that produce the work, the perfect work of God. And hopefully we, that goes out and goes to other places. And we, we love the fact we have contacts all over the world. Um, through churches, and you know, it was great that um, Priscilla's dad was able to speak here a couple of weeks ago, because it, it, it gives us that connection. Pedro comes from Spain, Valmir comes from Brazil, and others throughout the year will come and speak, um, or just be with us. Not everyone speaks, um, but it's great that we recognise that we also we're not, we are maybe a little body here, but we're, we are connected elsewhere. We're not insulated or isolated from the church in the world. And that's really important. Let's get on. Um, verse 12. For the body has, has many members, but all the members that one body being many are one body, so also is Christ. For by one spirit we were baptized into one body, 
whether Jew or Greeks, whether slaves or free, and have been made to drink into one spirit. So, again, making this point that it's one body in Christ by one spirit. Um, and, of course, just to reiterate my point, we, we don't, we're not saying that ECF is the body of Christ. We are saying that we are a small cell in the body of Christ distributed all over the world um, and you know, in the many churches around us. Um, moving on to verse 15, and this, this, I suppose, touches on how we function as a church. Um, if the foot should say, because I'm not a hand, am I not of the body? Is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear should say, because I am an eye, oh, sorry, I'm not an eye, I am not of the body, um, is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where would, the, where would be the hearing? If the whole were the hearing, where would be the smelling? But now God has set the members, each one of them, in the body just as he pleased. And if they were all one member, where would the body be? But now indeed there are many members, yet one body. And the eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you. Nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. No, much rather, those members of the body which seem to be weaker are necessary. And those members of the body which we think to be less honourable, on these we bestow greater honour. And our unpresentable parts have greater modesty. But our presentable parts have no need. But God composed the body, having given greater honour to that part which lacks it. That there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care for another. <clears throat> we all need each other. And everyone represented in this room, everyone who gathers in this church, literally has need of every other member of this body. And that means whoever you are, whatever part you play, in some respect, if you are in Christ and part of the body, then this congregation has need of you. Even if you're here just for a short time, even perhaps you're just visiting for the day, somehow God sets someone in the body because we need something from you. You can be a blessing even perhaps just by standing and worshipping, praying, praising. It doesn't really matter. Um, and we, if we find ourselves in other churches on particular occasions, even just if we're visiting on holiday, just remember that they are part of the same body. And so you somehow, by being there, add something to them. Even if it's just a little bit. Maybe it's just, I don't know, the encouragement of seeing someone come through the doors. Maybe it's just a louder, uh, the, the singing gets a little bit louder. Um, I don't know. Um, perhaps just a conversation you have where you, know, you talk to someone and you just, you know, uh, just share your faith, um, your common shared faith. So, you know, I'm, not, I'm not sort of trying to say it's all you know, big, powerful things all the time. I want to overplay it, but potentially we all have the capacity within us um, to be effective, to affect the body. Um, and with all these parts, the weaker, the stronger, the smelling, the seeing, and so on, they all play a part. So the young need the old, and the old need the young, and the men need the women, and the women need the men. <clears throat> and the more educated need the less educated, and the less educated need the more, ed more educated. <clears throat> yeah. Um, oh, I've got a phrase in my mind from a song. I can't get, quite get it. Um, but in rough terms, the poets need the theologians, and the theologians need the poets. Um, there are people who express things in that is full of feeling and emotion. Now we don't want to get. Sort of or fleshy or whatever, but the point is you're, you can put expression to what's going on inside you. And there are other people who are good at expressing what God has said in a sort of more systematic way, perhaps. We all need what we can add to each other. And we also all need what we can chip off each other. We all, we all need to have that influence that, that shapes us, transforms us, challenges our thinking challenges what we do. Maybe sometimes it brings out of us things we didn't know were there, and sometimes it has to kind of push down things that um, need a little less expression, shall we say. 
Um, but it's all put together by God. Um, now, I will touch on verse 31 um, in this chapter. Um, so Paul says all this about gifts and helps and administrations and so on, and do all do this and do all that, and not everyone does the same thing, and you can go and read it. But it says, but I earnestly desire, earnestly desire the best gifts. So as a member of the body, as part of ECF, we should actually be going to God and seeking him, desiring gifts, desiring to be able to serve our brethren, showing us how we can love each other. Because we can't have 150 people all standing at the front preaching for half an hour every Sunday. <clears throat> um, put me out of a job for a start. Um, but that's a joke that I'm not paid to do this. Um, but that comes back to something I'll maybe touch on later. But we can all be involved and we can all play our part. Um, so desire good gifts, but read chapter 13 because. To have all those gifts, as I've already said, without them being done in love, will become empty, hollow, and purposeless. It might actually achieve great things. We could potentially grow this church so big that, you know, because we get all those gifts working and operating just right, and just forget this core principle of love and laying down our lives for one another, and we'd have nothing. Um, okay, let's see if I can add something from elsewhere. Where's the next bit on my... my um, Romans chapter 12. I, I'm, I'm going to touch on some of these things just to show that it's, it's not just a one-off in Corinthians. Um, in Romans chapter 12, um, we have sim a similar idea. Um, in starting in verse 4... Um, well, the first three talks about not thinking of yourself more highly than you ought to, but, ought to, but think soberly as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. So, so if, you, if God does give you something to do, don't start thinking you're the bee's knees and that, you know, you're, the, you're, you're, you're so vital that the church will fold without you. Guess what? It won't. <laughs> um, doesn't mean we, doesn't mean we don't we might miss people if they, when, they, when they move on from here, but um, God willing, you know. And sometimes, just touching on that, sometimes it's necessary for someone, for God to move people out so that other people can flourish and grow in their place. Um, if we have one person doing all the preaching, how do we get the other preachers to come out and do their bit? Um, that's not me saying I'm leaving, by the way. Um, that would be bad timing, I suppose, wouldn't it? Um, but, um, but we do need to make space for each other to find our gifts and promote that. And sometimes it is necessary. Um, because God can use you somewhere else and he can grow here. Um, anyway, um, we have many members. So it's very similar. Um, I won't repeat it all, but we're all part of each other. We have different gifts. Um, there are some things there, though, that maybe are just a little different to, to 1 Corinthians, chapter 12. Um, he who exhorts in exhortation, he who gives with liberality, who leads with diligence, he who shows mercy with che cheerfulness. There are so many different gifts. There are so many different ways of operating in the church. To encourage someone, to exhort, to lift them up, you can give money, time, patience, a skill, all manner of ways you can give. Um, sometimes it's a one-off. Sometimes it's a pattern of life. Whatever God gives you to do at that time, sign up for the next work party. Um, and then again, if you look in Ephesians chapter 4, you will find, again, very similar things written um, from sort of verse 7 through to verse 16. Um, um, again, you'll see here that, that God gifts a multitude of gifts into the church. In verse 11, we have this well, fairly well-known thing. God himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry. Now, this is a really important verse in all of this. Notice how this is phrased. God gives these public, exalted ministries. 
prophets, apostles, preachers, teachers, pastors. They're the ones who, who, who get it all together. They're the ones who do the work, right? No. For the equipping of the saints, that is the whole body of Christ and our local gathering for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. So the, pub, the, the, the more well-known faces, the ones who seem to have the greater ministries, their purpose actually isn't to have all the, do all the work. They just get to, I don't know, speak a bit, say this, do some evangelism, um, help people, so that the whole body can function and work in Christ. Um, so we must never put people on pedestals and we must never think that one person is going to do it all. Um, I mean, there are verses, I, I'm hesitant to touch on this, but there are verses that talk of giving honour to those who labour in the word of God. Um, and that's, there's nothing wrong, it's, it's right. But if you ever see a preacher start thinking that he deserves some special attention, knock him down a peg or two. Oh, Amen. <laughs> <laughs> um, the Lord knows how. Um, you might be the hand that does it. Um, there, there are many things. Uh, and there are many things that could be said. I'm, I'm moving on for the sake of time, so I do want to try and finish on time. Um, there, there are, so there are lots of things um, that go into... And I, think, I think that has largely touched on the principle, I think that's mostly in my heart this morning, this, this body that, that works together to produce the life of God amongst us and to enable us all to grow. Um, I'm going to touch now for a few minutes and I have to sort of sort of semi-practical things. Um, just one thing. Hebrews chapter 10 talks about, chapter 10 verses 24 and 25, talks about people who, ne who neglect meeting together. And there are those who will hear say, well, I don't need to go to church because God is in me and I can go out there and I can do my work, I can serve the Lord amongst the lost and etc. Et et and there's nothing wrong with giving your time to... The, the poor and the needy and those who are lost. It's absolutely a wonderful thing to do. But God says that we need to come together on a reasonably regular basis to exhort and encourage each other in our faith. Partly to build each other up, partly so we're not sort of lone wolves out there doing our own thing and just doing whatever we feel like and not connected into the body because you are a part of a body that needs you to function. You need, you need that input that's coming from a different person that says, and li you're listening to what that they're saying and not just your own ideas. And so many reasons. Um, so gathering together is actually quite important. And in fact, the Lord's, in verse 25 of Hebrews chapter 10, it says, the mu so much the more as you see the day approaching. So actually the tougher things get, the more important it is that we find a way of sharing the word of God and our, our lives and our testimonies with each other. Um, <clears throat> so, a few practical things. First of all, if you've been here a long time, you do not call this a service. You call this a meeting. If you've been here less time, you might call it a service. You might not. You might, call, you might, you might have been um, uh, converted into the collective. <laughs> um, now, we don't want to get overly pedantic about words. Um, but I'm going to for a moment. Um, and it's the small thing. To me, a service implies someone doing something for me. A meeting implies coming together with people, coming together with people. So, so whatever you want to call this, what we do on a Sunday morning, it's not coming together, it's not coming to a place where someone else does something for you. It's coming together to share the life of Christ, to meet together. <clears throat> um, so the, the specific word you use doesn't matter too much, provided you understand what we're trying to achieve when we come here. 
but the pedantic person at the front right now will tell you that it's a meeting, not a service. Anyway, um, so meetings are not the be-all and end-all of church. They cannot be. If they are, I don't think there is actually a church. It's just a social club that meets once a week. Um, the meetings, though, are intended to be an expression of what we want us to be as a body. And that is why we don't have the leaders all sat at the front in the meeting. It's why we don't pre-plan the meetings very often. Because part of what we're expecting is that through the course of the week or the days or the months, whatever, beforehand, before a meeting, people are considering each other. What might I bring? Not because you have to. Not because there's some law that says, thou shalt bring one, after one song every three weeks. But because something in you is responding to God and what he might be asking you to do. It's why we give you a copy of the hymn book every time you come into the meeting. Because if, if there's something the Lord's doing in your heart and it can be expressed through song, then it's, we, we encourage people to bring that out because it might encourage somebody else. It might express what someone else is saying. Um, you know, that's essentially what a hymn writer does. They take the things they're expressing towards God, they write them down for us to benefit from later. But it's all because they've been meditating, hopefully, on what God is saying and have brought that out. I am going to run over a bit. I apologize for that. Um, so anyway, our meetings are designed, designed might be a strong word, but designed, um, to demonstrate the concept of church that we want to promote. They're designed to demonstrate the principle that everyone can be involved. Anyone can pray. Anyone can sing um, or choose a song. Anyone could choose to come and play an instrument, just see the band and ask how you can fit in. Anyone could stand up and preach. We do not have a rotor of preachers, although, but again, bring what God is giving you in the form God's giving it. We had, and one of the reasons I want to speak this morning is we had several people come up and share what God was speaking to them. You take it, you consider it, you think, is that from the Lord? You know, we're not always going to get it right. We're not, what the things we share are not always going to be from God. We can be good Bereans and go and consider whether these things are so. And if you've, if you've got a sort of thinking mind about you, don't just take what I'm saying as, as perfect evidence of how we should do a church. Go read it, think it. Is, am I right? Is this why we do what we do? Is it even a good pattern to follow? That might cause some issues if it's not. Um, but we should, we should always be willing to question, which is why when in, in Corinthians, where I think it's chapter 14, where it talks about people prophesying, it says two or three prophesy, let the others judge. <coughs> Don't just take what someone says and say, oh, that must be the word of God because they're, not, they're a nice person. But consider it. Think about it. Was it really the word of God or did they just have an emotional reaction? Or, you know, don't, and not to be picking people apart, but you know, we want what God is saying, first and foremost. So, the church is built on the capabilities of the body, so we can only have what God's put here, but we know we trust him. He's put enough here for, us, for what we need now. No one's forced to do anything. Sometimes we don't encourage quite strongly enough, but no one's forced to do anything. Um, everyone's contribution is valued. That's important. Um, we need to respect each other for the willingness to make a contribution, to pray. It can be a really tough thing to pray your first public prayer. It can be quite a tough thing to pray your thousandth public prayer, to be quite honest. Um, <clears throat> but it can be such a blessing to choose, a, to choose a song. Does it really fit in? Does it really matter? If, if it's something that speaks to you, sing it. And if it, do, if it doesn't speak to anybody, then it, just, it will pass by and we'll all sing quite heartily and then we'll move on. If it really speaks, then you might get some responses. People choose songs, oh, pray on the back of it. It doesn't really matter in the sense of, um, you know, am I going to get it wrong? If we trust each other to receive, it, to receive us, then we're free to give what God is giving us without fear without feeling self-conscious. Um, 
Obviously, we need to be considerate each of each other. Um, there's a pas- the passage in Corinthians talks about everything being done in good order. So if, if several people have chosen a song, maybe just wait a minute or two. Give people time to respond. If someone's spoken, don't choose a song straight away. Maybe. Just give people time to pray, s- speak to the Lord about what's being said. Um, I, but I do remember one meeting um, where we had some visitors from, I can't, for what's in the place, the um, did addiction recovery, Yeldor Manor. Um, I think it was Yeldor Manor, a couple of guys came in and had never been to a meeting like this where, they, where anyone could choose a song or sing or pray or whatever, and they just chose song after song after song. It, I think at some point I, I turned around to one of them and just said, just let other people have a chance, uh, just, just quietly. But they were so excited at the possibility of just being able to worship God freely. They took it up, they went with it, and it was great. And all it took was a quiet word just to say, yeah, but let someone else have a go. And they were absolutely fine with that. Because, oh, yeah, yeah, of course. Because they realized that the excitement they were feeling was the excitement someone else might be feeling. Um, but we need to respect each other. We need to honor each other. Um, there's probably a lot more that I could say, but I'm, I'm going to finish with um, something a bit odd. <laughs> have you ever seen the film Ratatouille? If you haven't, watch it afterwards. Um, <clears throat> I get all my best theology from Pixar films. No. Um, <laughs> um, the, the point of that film is that um, there's a, it, the story is it's about a rat who loves cooking. And there's a guy in the film who's written a book called I think it's Anyone Can Cook. Okay. And there's a food cricket, critic who is absolutely dismissive of this, this, this chef that says anyone can cook. Anyway, this rat, he learns to cook. He, he takes over a kitchen, won't go into how, because it's for the film. Um, and this food critic at the end realises that, because he, he discovers what the rat's doing and so on, realises what the, what the chef meant was not that everyone can cook brilliantly or that everyone can go into the kitchen. Um, but that you cannot judge what someone can do by what they look like. That's really the message of the film. And without putting, I was, there's probably sort of secular humanist meanings, but I don't want to take too much of it, but basically anyone can in this church. It doesn't mean everybody can do it perfectly. What it means is we mustn't look at people and set expectations on what they can do. We mustn't look at people of their education, as I said before, or, or whatever, or nationality, or what, wherever you've come from, and say, well, that limits what that person can do. It doesn't. Anyone can. Anyone who's willing to lay down their life to the Lord and say, Lord, use me in the way you want to use me, that God can, that God can take you up and use you. Not necessarily the same way as everybody else. Not necessarily as well as anybody else. Maybe better. Um, Maybe not. But if the Spirit of God dwells in you, there is the potential that you can do something that you do not expect. And so what you really mustn't do is say, there is no way I can do that. It might, there are things obviously practically might be, not be possible. But you come to God with the heart that says, Lord, anyone can cook. It could be me. It could be that I am the person who has the potential to serve the church in this way or that way at some point in the future. But at some point I'm going to have to start I'm going to have to start by boiling a pan of water. Maybe that's all. (laughs) Cooking 101, you know, boil a pan of water. That sounds stupid. But maybe that's the limitation of where you start. And you add a bit of this, and you add a bit. And over the course of time, God teaches you. You grow in gifts. You grow in the, the gift that God has given you. And he uses it more and more. When I first started speaking here, someone said to me, there's not a lot of grace in your preaching. 
Hopefully that's changed. Did I give up? No. I took it as constructive criticism, went back to the Lord and said, Lord, help me to speak your words to your people to build people up. And you don't have to be a preacher. But it wouldn't be a bad thing. Okay? So maybe, oh, I really have gone on. Maybe this is all, this is the sum of it. That we are a body composed of those who are filled with the Spirit of God. We want everyone who has his spirit to fulfill the calling that God has on your life. You have purpose. You have identity. What was the other one I used at Sarah's wedding? Yeah, I can't remember. Um, you have the potential and you have the opportunity, whether, whether it's when we come together or outside the meetings, to bring <coughs> tremendous blessings to the lives of our brethren. You have the potential. And this church will stand and fall on whether we all choose to do this or not. Because we're not going to manufacture it. I say, maybe we could do more to encourage some of these things, but ultimately, each individual is going to have to walk before God in whatever gift you have. So maybe that's it. Maybe all you need to take away from today is anyone can cook. Um... Anyone can be a productive member of this church. You just have to find your place and your way of doing it. I have no idea if that explains why we do things the way we do. Um, But I think it's a wonderful principle that we are a body loved by God, full of potential to see the manifestation of the works and the gift of God. So seek him for it. Amen.